In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And if you have your Bibles tonight, 1 Corinthians 15, and while you're turning there, I believe in giving honor where honor is due. And tonight I just want to give honor for just a few moments just to all of the men of God who have been here this weekend, Brother Wayland, Brother Wilson, Brother Lane, Brother Riley Martin, who absolutely had a, we had a special move of God this morning upstairs, and he is just an absolutely anointed young man, Brother Stone King. And I also want to give honor to my pastor, Pastor Gleason, and I got to tell you, yes, absolutely. in my life, and I have not met one pastor that is more invested than this young generation than Pastor Gleason. And he has invested in it not only with his, with his prayer, with his attitude, but everything that comes along with being invested in a generation, he is it. And I honor him and Sister Gleason for that. And just a quick story about Pastor Gleason. So a pastor is supposed to be there to lift you up in your best times and in your worst times. So uh, about a year ago, Pastor asked me to play golf with him. And this was my true, I knew he loved me moment. And so I used to play golf a lot about 10 years ago. And uh, I got out there. I got there early. I went to the driving range. The first shot ball I hit was 300 yards straight. So I was feeling really good. If anybody knows, Pastor's a really, really, really good golfer. And so I was feeling great. So I, I just kept playing around. And I thought, man, this is going to be great. I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to go out there and play like it was 10 years ago. And... <laughs> First tee comes up, pastor goes, why don't you go first? And I'm like, oh. So I say a prayer before I go. I say, God, I need you right now. <laughs> so the first shot, I completely whiff on the ball. And I'm like, oh, boy, I hope he didn't see that. And he saw it. So the next shot, I hit the ball. It goes 75 yards straight, about 130 yards right. And I'm like over in the forest at this point. I kneel down. I said, God, I said, I need you to get me out of this right now. Like, I need to be Phil Nicholson by the end of the day. Needless to say, God had a sense of humor, and that wasn't the case. The pastor loved me all day long, so I appreciate my pastor. He's there for me in the good times and in the bad. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, starting at verse number 3, it states, For I delivered you to first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, and then by the twelve. And after that, he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, whom the greater part remains to the present, but some have fallen asleep. And then Acts 1 and 15 states, But in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples altogether. The number of the names was about a hundred and twenty. And if I could, for just a few moments tonight, I would like to talk about a tale of two portions. A tale of two portions. Before we go any further, one more time, can we just lift our hands to Jesus? Can we thank him for what he's done already and what he's going to do the rest of this week? Lord, I give you glory and I give you honor in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would have your way this evening. someone will shout to you, what do you have? Every single time you walk in. And then you order it and their follow-up question is, would you like a double? And of course, when you're there, you can't resist a double chili cheese, double cheese, double bacon hamburger. Who could resist that? I know Daniel Torres is happy about that. But you can't resist it. And they always ask. It's, and I went through the line twice just to see if they would ask me again. Not for the fact that I wanted another hot dog with onion rings and a french fry. But they always ask. And when we, we look at this, we say we always want more as a people. 
we always want that extra scoop of ice cream. And just for a quick survey in the room, everybody that eats one scoop of ice cream, please raise your hand. Yeah. Brother Stone King will be anointing you later and asking that God would deliver you to the two scoops of ice cream. Because I don't know how you live life eating one scoop of ice cream. But we always want more. We always want that double shot iced trenta, caramel, pumpkin spice latte. We always want more. But all of a sudden, when it comes into the presence of the realm of God, why do we fall so short on going for the double portion? We'd much rather spend three hours watching a basketball, a football game, or a baseball game than spending three hours interceding on some lost soul's behalf. But we need more. The conference title and the, the focus is a double portion. And we see that in our text chapter, we see that there were 500 people that saw Jesus ascend. My question to you is, where on earth did the 380 go? Now I know that in the Bible, the 120 represent the 120 that were there in the temple and they fell out and they worshiped God in one accord. I get that. But where on earth, what on earth did they have going on that was so important that on the day of the most important day of all days in history, where the world was changed, where the world would never be the same because somebody decided that it was important to make it to an obscure prayer meeting. You see, the 380 decided that, you know what, that obscure prayer meeting isn't for me. I saw Jesus ascend. That's good enough for me. You see, those people are what I like to classify as single portion saints. Those are the people that like to show up for the big services. They're there for passing the mantle. They're there for general conference, maybe youth convention, maybe youth congress. They'll even shed a few tears. They'll even come down to the altar and wail. But they're the ones that would much rather be late to church on a Sunday morning because they stayed up late night watching the college football game. Oh, they'll come to church, but the moment that a fast is declared, the moment that we're supposed to be there for prayer and seeking God, they're nowhere to be found. And so I ask you, my question is, do we want the double portion? Because I'm not content with being a single portion saint any longer. And what we need is a generation that will rise up and say, I'll be the one to fast. I'll be there in the prayer room. I'll be there whatever you need, Pastor. the 380 they were more interested in worrying about what was going on down the road than interested that they were about to see history unfolded before their eyes generations of prophecy was getting ready to be unfolded and all they had to do was show up that's all they had to do but instead they decided to keep on going down the road they decided that they weren't they didn't need anything else that that single portion would be enough to make it through the Bible doesn't say whether the 380 ever made it or they ever received the Holy Ghost. I don't know. But I do know that they missed the greatest day that was the birth of the church. And what happens is when we become so focused on all of the things around us instead of all of the things that are in front of us, what God is trying to draw us to, we become single portion saints. I got if you missed this morning's message from Brother Art Wilson and you weren't on your face and convicted, I don't know what to tell you, because I was convicted. I wanted to go out, and I wanted to reach my world like never before. Come on. I want to be a double portion Christian. Yeah. I'll never forget, there was, there, there was a time back when I was younger that I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, huge basketball fan. And my dad and I, we used to go to games, and we used to, go watch the Nets play, and I'll never forget it. The first time he told me, the first basketball game we went to, he said, son, there are two rules in order for us to go to a game. He said, the only way we will go to a game is if you cheer as hard for Jesus on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Not just on Sunday, but on Wednesday night. And we don't ever miss church for a sporting event. There was one night where Michael Jordan was in his final year playing for the Washington Wizards. And anybody that knows me knows Michael Jordan is my basketball icon. I look at him like, I, that's who I tried to be. Wasn't ever close to him, obviously. <laughs> but I, I wanted to be him. I would even shoot the ball with my tongue out. I owned the Jordans. I had it. 
just not the game. <laughs> and he was playing for the Washington Wizards, and I, I saw the game. It was on Wednesday night, and I told him, I said, man, I'd love to go to the game. And I didn't even mention it to my dad because I knew the answer would be no. And I just said, you know what? So a couple of days later, the game's coming up, and my dad says to me, and I don't know if this was a test or not. He says, do you want to go to the game on Wednesday? And I said, no, sir. I said, you know what? I said, you taught me two things. That if I go to a game, I have to worship that hard for Jesus. And I said, I'll never miss church. And I said, Dad, I'm sticking to that promise. Well, this was on a Wednesday night. How many times do we ever have to blow out church on a Wednesday night? That Wednesday night, I received the touch of a lifetime from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because what happens when there's a generation that decides that the double portion is worth more than anything in the world? It's worth more than seeing Michael Jordan play. It's worth more than going anywhere. It's the experience of the move of God. You can be seated. In those single portion saints, we miss it. We miss the most miraculous moves of God just because we've got something else going on. We're so content with that single portion that the double portion is something that we never even consider. When God is saying, I'm calling you, I want you to go deeper in me. So we look at this and we look and you can look throughout all of the Bible. And there are plenty of single portion saints. There are plenty of people who decided in the Bible that one time was enough for them. That there was one time, one move of God, it'd be okay for them. They'd make it everything was going to be all right. But there are some people in the Bible who wanted the double portion. And I believe tonight that I happen to be preaching to a generation of young people that want the double portion. We're not content to miss a Wednesday night youth group. We're not content to miss a Friday night prayer session. We're not content to miss a fasting when the pastor calls it because we understand that there's something much larger at stake. double portion is something that we must seek after. It is something that we must look at and say, I want the double portion. This is so perfectly drawn out in the story of Jacob. This is a man who stole his first portion. We know that Jacob wrestled until daybreak and said, I won't let go until you bless me. He required a walking stick to go with him after receiving a life-changing blessing. He surely had a life-changing moment and received the double portion. Sure, he started out as a liar. He started out as a deceiver. But it doesn't matter where you start, as Brother Wilson talked about this morning. It's where you finish in your relationship with God. The people hear me tonight that it doesn't matter what the world says you can or cannot do. That there is a God who sent his son to die on Calvary for your sins and for my sins so that you can receive the double portion. We're content to see one miraculous thing. But I believe that there's a generation of young people that will say, I will not let go until I receive the double portion. I'm not moving, God, until I get what you came and you're going to give me, God. The end of Jacob's life in Hebrews 11 and chapter number 20 exemplifies just how incredible it was. It states, by faith. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Now there's much debate among theologians on whether that word staff means a physical or literal staff. But for tonight, if I could, I would like to use that as the literal staff is what he worshipped on. According to many biblical scholars who during their trips over to the Middle East and to Israel and such, when they would unearth staffs and rods, there would be dates, times, dates and words and moments in time etched on these staffs. They said the rod or the staff would typically be used throughout the entire lifetime of a person. They would use this as a, as a diary, if you will. Key dates, places, times. Words would be carved on them. And what they would see is that this would give them a glimpse into the life of these people. Now I imagine myself 
in Jacob's shoes, sitting there at the end of his life, looking to do something. This is a man who received the double portion. He said, I will not let go until you bless me. I imagine at the end of his life, as he's sitting there with Manasseh and Ephraim, and he's wandering, he says, God, I need to bless them. I want to bless the generation to come after me. Because God told Jacob that I will bless you, bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And so the transfer of the blessing was so important. The transfer of the mantle, if you will, was so important to Manasseh and to Ephraim. Because what would come would be a double portion that Jacob received. I imagine that as he's sitting there, getting ready to bless them, getting ready to give them what he had. The Bible says that his eyes were dim. Probably ran his hands up against that staff. And I'd like to think that he might have hit that moment where he remembered that he wrestled until he received the double portion. I believe that at that moment, that as he sat there, I believe that as he began to bless them, I'm sure that all those memories came back of wrestling all night, saying, I'm not letting go until you will bless me. And I'm sure at that moment as Manasseh and Ephraim are sitting there, it probably got to the point where maybe his hands began to tremble. And he began to call out upon the name of God and to say that I want this portion upon them. You see, young people, what the most important thing that you'll ever realize is, is that you need to be submitted to your man of God so that you can receive the mantle and the double portion that you desperately need. Jacob had zero strength left, but yet he got up and he said, I will bless thee. And so, as we look at this and we say, what on earth does this have to do with a double portion? It all boils down to the fact that when you receive a double portion, everything changes. You show me one Christian one saint of God who's received a double portion. And I guarantee you, they walk different, they talk different, they look different than every other person that receives just a single portion. You see, Jacob, after he had the hollow of his hip touched, after he sat there and he wrestled all night, no doubt that that staff became more to him than just a daily diary, more to him than something that he used to just hit the sheep with just to get them in line. But it became something that he held on to because he needed it to steady himself. He needed it to push through in the most difficult of times. You see, the portion and the double portion of the mantle that you're looking for will only come when we say, God, I want it, I'm not letting go, and I'm going to use you when all else fails. You see that double portion, that mantle, that rod, that staff that he used became everything that he needed to hold himself up. And the only way that we will receive what God has for us, young people, is when we realize that the only thing we need is Jesus. It doesn't matter what's going on on Snapchat. It doesn't matter what's going on on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. But what we need is Jesus. Hallelujah. See the double portion, everything changes. Everything changes. And I wonder tonight what young person is going to say, I'm not moving. God, I'm not leaving. God, I'm going to stand here all night if I have to to receive the double portion that you have for my life. You see, young people, the generation, Brother R. Wilson talked about it. Everybody is fighting for you. Everybody. What God is looking for is a young person that says, I'm going to submit myself to my pastor like never before, even when I don't like him. That's the harsh reality of it. Pastor's going to preach sometimes and it's going to step on your toes, but we still must submit so that we can receive the double portion. A single portion saint rarely makes history or changes their world. Single portions are for those who are content with the status quo and not going any deeper than that. Double portion saints, however, are those who don't mind leaving radically transformed. 
single portions are those who like to blend into the crowd and not stand out. The double portion saints are those who look different, they act different, and they talk different. See, the greatest part about being a double portion saint is, is everybody knows you've got something. They know that there's something different about you. This is why separation and holiness is important, young people. You can't receive a double portion and wear whatever you want, do whatever you want, and still expect to receive the mantle that God has for you. Jacob didn't leave the same way that he came. He didn't go back out doing the same things that he did. Uh -uh. When he left, he received a radical transformation. If your friends at school, your friends at college can't tell you from any different than anybody else that walks down, you need to find yourself in an altar and say, God, I'm not leaving until I'm changed. And so we see throughout all of the Bible that there were those that were content with the single portion. But those that wanted more always found a way to yes. seek God. Yes. Yes. You can look at Daniel. This is the man who was told that he'd be thrown to the lions. And he said, I don't care. I'm going to pray even more. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are easy ones. They said, I'm not bowing. I'm not giving in. I'm going to go face the fiery furnace. And all of a sudden, God shows up and everything's changed. Yes. Something happens when we decide that we want the double portion. Brother Wilson isn't here, but over a year ago, I stood right here, right here. Brother Justin was here with him. Brother Justin introduced me to Brother Wilson. And Brother Wilson told me something that I will never forget. I immediately wrote it down. He said, if you humble yourself and submit to your man of God, he said that there will be a prophetic destiny and a prophetic ministry upon your life. And man, I didn't know what to say. Speechless for once in my life. It doesn't happen very often. I'm Italian. What, what do you want? I'm talking with my hands. It's hard to use a microphone. But I'm speechless. And I left that night. And I told my wife. And as I went home, I prayed. And I said, God, whatever it takes, I want the double portion. God, I don't want to be just a single portion saint that just shows up at the big events. God, I don't want to be a single portion saint that can't show up early for prayer or can't fast when the pastor asks for it, God. But God, I want more for my life than I can ever imagine. God, I want everything that you have for me. But young people, it doesn't come unless we submit ourselves to a man of God and say, whatever you need me to do, Pastor. If it's cleaning toilets, if it's vacuuming, whatever it is, I want to be there to do it. Another thing, another trait of a single portion saint is that when there's nobody else worshiping, we just kind of sit back. Oh man, I can't be the first one out there worshiping. I can't be out there lifting my hands up and crying upon the name of Jesus. But a double portion saint says, I will go out there and I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall forever be in my mouth. And I'm not content and stop it with a single portion. Young people, I want to tell you tonight that if you want the true move of God that God has intended and designed for your life, the way that it will happen is when we say there is nothing that will ever stop me from reaching the throne of God. There's no video game, there's no book, there's no sporting event, there's no work, there's nothing that will ever stop me from reaching the throne of God. Jacob did not walk the same way, he didn't talk the same way. But what happened was something changed as we stand tonight. most important part of this story is as follows. Manasseh and Ephraim were the benefactors, the beneficiaries of something, a double portion, because a man of God spent all night seeking God. 
Young person, your pastor has prayed for you and fasted for you and probably cried over you a few times. The least we can do is lift our hands and show up and worship God. Your pastor and your elders in your life have paved the way for you to receive the double portion. You see, I look at my life and I have two men of God right here that I call upon, that I lean upon. These men have veto power in my life. If they say, Nathan, you shouldn't be doing that, guess what? I'm not doing it anymore. No matter how uncomfortable, no matter how annoyed it may make me feel, I'm not doing it because I know that being in submission to God is what it results in a double portion. At 721 last week, this Saturday night, after a long day of cleanup for Jesus Christ, I began to focus on what God would have for this service. And I shared this morning, this this morning in Vindicated Student Ministries is where the writer was speaking. The presence of the Lord impressed upon me that there is a young person here in this conference, this very room right now, that if you will see God and you will go and beyond and you will say, God, I'm not stopping until I receive the double portion that you will play an integral part of the largest revival the United States has ever seen. I'm not saying that just to pump us up or to get us to feel good, but this is what God has told me to tell you tonight. That nobody has ever picked up the mantle and was okay with a single portion, and they ever used the mantle effectively for the kingdom of God and the full purpose that God had intended. No single person saint has ever done that. But the only way that you will ever fulfill what God has put upon your life and to see the largest revival the United States has ever seen is when we pick up the mantle and say, God, I am not moving, I am not leaving until you bless me. There's a youth pastor from the state of Texas who took his youth group to North American Youth Congress last year. He said on Friday night he had two young people after Brother Stone King had gotten up and spoke. They were both completely passed out speaking in other tongues. They were both completely just gone in the spirit. He said that Sunday night, one of them showed up for church, one of them did not. One of the excuses was I did not have enough laundry. I, I spent all my clothes at, at Youth Congress. I didn't have anything to wear to church. That night, the person that showed up in a wrinkled suit, tie, he didn't even have one, it was used in an interpretation of tongues that night. Young people, when you say, God, I don't care what I've got to do to get to the house of God. I don't care what I've got to sacrifice. I don't care what I've got to give up. I don't care what I've got to seek after God. God, I will give it my all to receive the double portion. Say, God, everything in my life is yours. God, I've submitted to you. It doesn't matter where I go, God. You will be with me. God, when the trouble times get tough, and when everything seems wrong, you are what I'm holding on to. Because I know that I need the double portion. Church, I want you to come and join us. All right, now listen carefully. Andrew, I'd like for you to stand right here, facing the platform. Zach, if you'll stand right here, move up as far as you can. Zach, right here. Daniel, right here. All right. Uh, Logan, come here. And Cameron, and Cameron.
Cameron, Logan right there, Cameron right here, Cameron right here. All right, I need three lines, one going this way and one going that way, ages 12 to 30. This is the night of anointing. What a great message we've heard. If all of those that are in that age bracket, if you'll just come and stand, we need to be able to pass through you so that we can pray over you. So please find a place. Just come as far forward as you can. Don't choose the back row. Choose the front row. Leave the back row for those that are coming up later. Those of you in the front row, just put your toes right up on the, on the stair or on the platform. And we just need a space in between every line. If there's not a space in between you, we can't get to you. So make sure that we can. And we're going to pass among you just indiscriminately. All of these pastors, all these licensed ministers are here. What you're receiving tonight is a card that looks like this. It says, Night of Anointing, Double Portion, Passing the Mantle. And Brother Stone King, we have a quote for him. May a double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost be imparted to this generation. And he has signed it. This is something you can keep in your Bible. Because something's going to happen tonight to somebody here. You're never going to forget it. It's going to be a night of change. You've already heard the message. When everything changed. I need the congregation to lift your hands behind us. If your student is here, if your child is here, if your grandchild is here, or a friend of yours is here, we want you to intercede for this generation because they're going to see a mighty revival. I want the ministers to begin to move. Now, among these young people, young people, I want you to receive the card when they press it into your hand, but I want you to close your eyes right now and lift your hands to the Lord, and I want you to begin to prepare your heart to receive a blessing, to receive an anointing, It's time to stop the games. It's time to stop. 
We have to identify what a Christian is, what a Christian truly really is. Now, if I were to ask you, hey, brother or sister, what is a Christian or what does the word Christian mean? I'm not going to ask you because I'm afraid you might tell me it means Christ-like. 
If you tell me the word Christian means Christ-like, all that simply means is you never looked it up. You didn't look in the dictionary or the lexicon. And my mama taught Susie, my sister and I, don't use words you haven't looked up because you might be using the word wrong. So the word Christian does not mean Christ-like. On page 672, column 1, paragraph 3 of the Greek-English lexicon of New Testament words by Joseph Henry Thayer, he said the word Christian is from the Greek word Christianos, and it means follower and worshiper of Jesus Christ. A Christian is somebody who follows and worships Jesus, because in reality, we don't know nobody just like Jesus. Jesus Christ has never been duplicated and never been replicated. A follower and a worshiper of Jesus is a Christian. So the Bible says in Matthew 4 and 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You serve the God that you worship. I can hang out with anybody. That's why Evangelist Green, it was a treat to hang out with you. I can hang out with anybody 20 minutes. I will tell you who your God is because you serve the gods you worship. If you worship money, you serve your business or your job or whatever you do to get money. If you worship fashion, you serve clothes. If you worship education, you serve degrees. If you worship knowledge, you serve science. If you worship your body, you serve exercise. If you worship your belly, you serve food. If you worship lust, you serve sex. If you worship getting high, you serve alcohol. If you worship yourself, you serve pride. If you worship sin, you serve the devil. Let me admonish you. Worship God and serve Jesus. Jesus is the only legitimate object of worship in the entire world. Though our sins are scarlet, you have made us white as snow. Though our sins are scarlet.